Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying these little videos. Today we're making this design right here. And what I like about it is that it's pretty straightforward. I think we see this all the time in dashboards and desktops, and it's gonna have almost like little components inside of there. And again, we're gonna have some macro and micro layout. Let's get started right away um, because hopefully we can make this one in a short amount of time. I doubt it. Things don't tend to happen as quickly as we want them to do the in dev world. So I'm gonna collapse the head so that we're in the same scenario as I was before. I have live reload happening with HTML and my CSS, I'm using post CSS preset ENV, which is kind of like using Babel for CSS. And so you'll be seeing me write some pretty modern looking uh, CSS. And anyway, if you're interested, go find short stack. It's got it all set up for you. All right, what I'm gonna do right at the beginning here is just lay out some of the structural HTML. And what I'm looking at is sort of this section. So it even looks like a section. We're gonna use a section element and it's on a black background. So let's start with here. We'll kind of mimic some of the page styles here. And uh, this time we'll try to use more custom properties just so folks can see how I like to do that. So first, um, let's make a surface color and I'm gonna make that. So the surface of this particular site was pretty dark. So it's uh, zero saturation. Um, we'll say zero, uh, well, uh, zero hue, zero, zero saturation and our darkness. We want it pretty dark, so not a lot of lightness. We'll try 10%. And then for our text color, uh, we'll do text is HSL, so complementary. We won't really do anything here, and we'll do 90% sure. It looks just like a nice little harmony, right? Come down here, and our background we will set to our var surface. If I can type var surface, yes, and our text color will be the text color, All right? Okay, so if I hit save, we should see an update. Excellent. Okay, and we're gonna run into an issue where text color is different inside of our section here right away, right? Okay, so uh, we've got some base colors. We can now write our section and let's fill our section with its first header. Well, here, what do we wanna do? There's two headers. Uh, we can use a header element. Let's use an H1 for the overview. Well, hmm, we don't know how many are on the page. Let's just start, so here, overview. And in this case, after that, we'll have other stuff to do. Let's just get this laid out. So there's our overview. We've got a, a grid on our uh, parent document here that's going to be centering our content. So we'll see if we get into that much or not. Um, we'll check it out. For now, we'll start with our section, which uh, we want to have a background uh, of a light surface. So here we have a surface, uh, and then we we'll use a second surface, surface two. And the reason I'm using surface two and not like light surface or dark surface is in a in a custom media query where you're checking for preference of light or dark. It's nice to not be using dark or light in your naming where you'll then have to invert it and it no longer is meaningful as dark or light. So anyway, if they're numbered, uh, you can just start referencing them as, num as numbers and maybe it's a gradient from strength, right? So surface zero here uh, is really dark and maybe surface five is really light. Well, right now I only have a couple surfaces, so my uh, range is really low and I can go modify this later. Anyway, we want essentially uh, white um, to be in that, that background color for the surface of this section. So let's just specify it pretty much as that way, surface two. Our text will disappear, or our text is actually not disappeared. And look, we could even do like surface two text, but I think text two makes sense here because, well, uh, that's again, that's the range we have. Our range is really small and we can make this, we could name these more complimentary if we wanted to, but for right now, um, I'm happy having having this sort of dynamic range where I'm either a light theme or a dark theme and it's done so using these matching surfaces and texts. So we will adjust that here with our color is text to. Excellent, so we see our updates and um, let's see, our section right now does not have a custom display type and if I look down here, I really don't see any reason to. We just have divs. If I was to block this out, that looks like one full width element, another full width element that will wrap, a full width header here that will wrap, a full width subtext, which we'll get to in a second, which will wrap, and then a reuse of that component layout, which will wrap and have little components inside of them. Great, so I'm not gonna change its display type. I'm gonna give it a border radius though. Border radius. Uh, let's use one rem. It looks like about a rem on the edge there. And we're needing some padding and we'll do padding of two rem. It looks to be about double the uh, border 
radius corner. So I like using nice whole units like that. And I saw that our H2 was in there causing a ruckus. So our particular design here is going to call for, and I already know we're going to want this with our paragraph. And maybe, is there another header? Maybe an H3 is going to show up in there. So here we'll say H2, uh, H3, and paragraphs right now, you are going to be margined out. I'll bring in margin um, later. So don't you worry about your spacing. Okay, and our section right now, here, let's go to, let's change this body grid because right now this grid is place content center, which is um, kind of squishing our elements here. It's changing their alignment and their distribution and um, it's making it hard for us to kind of understand what's happening there. Now grid is also making it hard for us to understand what's happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that on the body entirely. Now we have the div we thought we were getting uh, and we can see our padding is making us expand outside of our box sizing area. So let's just go ahead and set our box sizing to border box after we put padding on our section. I think it's pretty safe to say that all your sections are gonna want that padding that way. And look, I have some, uh, some property it's going outside here, margin zero. Do I not have margin zero on this element? I should, but I don't. The body needs margin zero. Okay, now we're essentially into the healthy spot we're at. And uh, just to give our page some padding, let's do two rem. Um, okay, now we're into a scenario where we can feel like we're working with a similar, oh, look at our border radius is too much. Okay, that's good. And here, I'm actually gonna bring this up a little closer until we need to, um, here, let's try one character, one X. So this is like half a character. Look at that, that looks really nice. That's pretty much right on there. And this is a nice flexible unit. I think our padding is healthy. Uh, we might have more padding on block than we do inline. And that looks like just a stylistic choice of this design. And I am going to, I'm not going to keep that. I'm gonna make a decision to remove that. And look at our text. Our text is actually too dark. So our text too, let's make this 20%. So we've just gone towards a lighter value by saying uh, we're not 10% white or 20% white, or um, there's an amount of lightness here. And it's like, how much bright, how much whiteness do you wanna bring in? And we're saying, eh, just a little more. So we're increasing this number to go a little bit more. And I think that matches really close there. Great. Uh, definitely, this is not white. Also, let's go 98 here. I think this is a really common pattern too, is to not use bright white or to reserve bright white for very specific use cases. And look at that, I made it 95% white and I think we're matching that a lot better now. We could use an eyedropper if we want to be picky, but right now I'm not being picky. I'm having fun free flowing my way through this uh, layout. Okay, so we've got our overview. Our overview is too, uh, too heavy there. So in the case of where we have a header two or here we'll say is h2 or h3 so any case where we've got some headers inside oh i don't want to be uh i just want to change this h2 right now it doesn't match the size of the other ones over there and it also looks like total sectors by time i wonder if this is an h3 that has a bigger font size or maybe it's just a bold paragraph i don't know we're going to kind of i think this hierarchy is interesting maybe that h3 is intentional it's a little smaller um, anyway, so I'm just gonna make sure our section H2 is going to be smaller and our H3 is probably gonna be larger. That's how I'm gonna structure it because I think this reads as a heading of, of order of importance that this header is a, a, you know, a header to all of this stuff and this header is just contextual to this one. So we're gonna wanna make sure that, the, that we're using the right order of them and then we can style them different. So, right? so it's like if design wanted them to look different, that's fine, but we're going to organize them uh, in the right way. Okay, so we'll just say font size. Uh, that looks pretty small. It's probably like 1.25 rem. It's like just above paragraph size. Eh, it's probably 1.15. I don't like it when I get into 1.15 numbers though. Uh, let's just keep it one and a quarter rem. So this is me. I'm just correcting what I think the intent here was and I could go look at this time, whatever. Anyway, okay, so we've got our header and we're ready to kind of move on to our next set of elements. We haven't had to do much layout yet. Uh, this is mostly just like padding and and sort of, you know, surface creation, it's surface and typography. So let's get into our first layout that we're gonna have to do. So we have our H2 and we're going to need a like little nested component here. We'll call this um, stats. 
This is our stats component. Great. Um, or stats class. Naming things so hard and difficult. And our first item, so we're going to have children in here. So this isn't a list. Uh, it's a list of things, but right, we're not again going to use a ULLI because I don't think that works in here. We have a complex relationship here where these things um, have a, a direction. They're going to need to reflow. Anyway, so we'll get into it. So stats, uh, we'll just start somewhere. We need to kind of contain all of these in a stat child. So maybe we'll do like a stat item, stats item, sure. Uh, and in here, we're going to have a paragraph title because we want the full width paragraph of that. It's going to be uppercase. Let's see, is there any semantic element that would be good here? Maybe like a label, but the label is not, hmm. And the number is fine to represent in sort of just a span and a number. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> we could just use two divs because they're both full width. We don't need to do it. Is there any other elements that could make these more meaningful? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to do a paragraph and a div. This is just some text, and this is just a number. And we don't really have an element to hold numbers. I mean, we it's arguable, but anyway, OK, let's start with this. So rules, and I'm also going to make sure I do the uppercase in there because that looks stylistic. And we have 154, 154. Let's make a couple of these just so we can work with something and then we'll get into the filling out the rest of it later. Declarations and oh, there's 441 and properties. This is a you might recognize this design here. It's from CSSStats.com. You can run your page styles through uh, some really nice stats and get some information about them. Okay, I'm gonna move this down. We have some data. So we have a couple new class names. We have stats and stats items. So let's get started with those in here. We'll get our stats. Uh, and well, I don't think we need to like, here, we'll do stats item. It's nice to stay as flat as possible for as long as possible. I think nesting is great, but it can get you into interesting scenarios that you might not want later. Anyway, like this one makes sense. All H2s in this type of section, maybe you'd want to class this section out as like a, um, a stats section, but I don't know. This could be something you could figure out about your, in your design system if you wanted to get really picky with that or not. Okay, our stats. Uh, this is, uh, dis let's see, we don't even have to change the display type on these. Look, they're already, um, well, that's the stats item doesn't need to do display type, but this does. And we're going to use grid, and we're going to use grid for a couple of reasons. But the first one is grid template columns. And we're going to say, um, let's see, we don't want to auto fit. Ah, I think we do. Let's do a um, repeat, uh, repeat auto fit min max. Looks like I lost my selection over here for some reason. Repeat auto fit min max. Um, let's have this be like oh four is twenty five percent or one fr. I wonder if that'll work. That worked. Okay, so essentially what we're saying is we want um, a responsive grid. So if I am, if I pull this shorter, I should see these collapse at a certain point. No, they're not collapsing. Uh, and that's because 25% will continually resolve to a value. And it's like, I don't know if that's going to crush stuff or not. So let's say 20 characters. Now we're in business. Oh, we lost, we have an orphan there. So we're, we're kind of cutting out early. We might be able to do something about that later. We'll see. Okay, so we've got our basic layout that's happening right there. That's nice. And our stats item is uh, not going to need any special display type. Let me get this back up into our view. Do we need any margin or padding? I think our stats container could use some, but I think we could also get away with gap. Look, let's put display grid on the section. I like to do the display type at the top. Display grid, and just uh, we're going to let it naturally flow how it was before, and we'll put two characters of gap in between these. And that is great. Now, this child, these stats are just kind of shrink wrapped into this one little row, which I think is really nice. So our stats item is, uh, this, this is our container for our, our P and our div. Okay, I'll see, we can say stat 
Let's make this div a stat. Uh, sure. And we'll give the above one a class of label. There we go. I think that makes sense. This will be nice and easy in here. So we'll say stat item and uh, it's direct label and a stat item and it's direct stat. Great. Classic dev naming stuff where you're like stat item and then it has a stat. And you're like, well, I thought, what? what's a stats item? Stats, stats, uh, so funny. Okay, so our stat, we want this to be font size really large, like four RAM. Sure, I'm just going to put that in there for funsies. Oh man, it was almost there. Let's do three and a half. Great font weight. Bold. Bolder. Bold. Bold looks a little too bold. That's cool. I like it though. Um, and our font size is just a little too big, isn't it? Let's try three and a quarter. Yeah, that looks closer to whatever was authored there. Our label, let's do a text transform uppercase. So that's going to get us closer to our design there. And our font size is too big. Font size, this one I'm going to do like 0.9 rem. Because whatever it is now, it's at about it's the page size, which is perfect, what we want. But in this case, this is a label that does look a little smaller than uh, the rest of the stuff. So let's do... It's 80% of whatever the body font size is. So we're not getting into too danger of, dangerous of a small font. I don't like doing this usually. Because uh, anyway, I like the most, the smallest font in my whole design system should be whatever the base font size is that people want to read at. That's my opinion. It's like make the base font size the most legible one and then work up from there. As opposed to right now where I'm kind of creeping into the small area. So someone could have bumped up their font size on their computer. And then I went in and I said, yeah, well, this size is slightly smaller than what you want. And it's hard, hard decisions to make. Um, and I'm going with a quick win right now, which is just these labels are going to be a little bit smaller. And they also look like they're a little bit uh, bolder. When you make things that small, it's nice to make them a little bit more bold. They also probably have a slightly lighter color because look at that. They are popping too much. Also, our bold is really bold. Can we go regular? Or no, it's a, uh, um, we want 500. Mm, 600. So we're sort of picking weight since in the system font right now. Yeah, I think that made rules match here and our font weight here looks more like 800. Ooh, that was too much. 700. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Great. I am uh, a little curious about our font color here. Um, I'm, I might want to create a variant. We'll see. Okay, so for now, um, we have laid that out. We're done, right? Oh, there's a little bit of spacing issue here. Where is that spacing coming from? Oh, it's the line height of our stat. So our stats font size is very large. It's line height and it's letterbox is very large now. So if we go line height 1.1, we'll essentially help that collapse. It's still a little tight though. And we're showing numbers. Oh, if we're showing numbers, we got to do tabular nums too. So here, uh, font variant font. Oh man, I just variant. Yes, numeric. And we want tabular nums. Ooh, can you see the difference? I like it. Cool. I'm just going to take, yeah, take that style, drop it into our stat. And what was the other thing? Our line height really didn't make that big of a difference, but I think it closed it up enough that uh, I can feel happy with what's there. It's not quite as tight as it is here. And honestly, I like that tightness. So let's go figure out if our paragraph, maybe it doesn't really need to lose any of its space. It's this one. It's our stat that has a big letter box. I do not like making line height less than one, but this is an exception because these numbers, this is where we need leading trim. This would be a leading trim opportunity because right now I'm dropping my line height into the danger zone where like a descender could get cut off, but I'm trusting that I'm representing only numbers and that I'm not going to need that descender. Hmm. Okay. So I got a line height. I don't really like it that tight. Sure. Let's line height 0.9. Um, hopefully it makes sense 
why I don't want to do that. I guess that's a whole other lesson, but like a descender would be like the, the lowercase letter Y and it's Y could be reaching down and we might cut it off if we had like overflow hidden. Anyway, there's like, it's, it's a thing to be mindful of, but not necessarily a rule. You can drop your line hybrid under one, but just know when and why you're doing it because it could come back for you later. So anyway, we're going to go with the line high point nine there. And we're going to bring back our design and move on to uh, some more HTML. Great. So now we're going to do an H3 and some stats. And the H3 is going to have a little message after it too. So here's our H3. And its header is total selectors by type. Perfect. And our first label is ID and it's got zero of those. Our next one was class, we have 28. We have pseudo class, pseudo class. I always have to say that one out loud when I spell it and say the ps the pseudo, the pseudo class, the pseudo element. Six, great. Great, total selectors by type, so we'll fix that, and we need to add in our little small. So I'd be like, I'd say this is a small, it's like a small aside type of message, and this is selectors are the part of a CSS rule set that describes what elements in a document the rule will match. That is correct, and let's see, selectors are the part of a CSS that just describes D, describes what elements in the document the rule will match. Rad, 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 let's scoot this down. Look at that, we're really close. So we can go into our design system and say, hey, all smalls uh, are gonna have the color of HSL 0%, or 0, 0% and 50%. So they're straight up in the middle. It's sort of like, I'm just gonna take a wild guess right here now so that this one will work in a light or a dark theme and it will always be middle gray. I bet you it has contrast issues though. Do, 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 get the accessibility to it. Yep, it's failing. So we could try like bumping up the darkness there. Yeah, so now we're passing. So we might have to adjust something uh, specifically, but in this case we know, here, let's do a small inside of here uh, boom 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 shifting and we'll say in this particular case of a section with a small it will have um, let's see we need it to be pretty dark so let's try 40 and if we bring that towards that we are back in the green zone so okay well, anyway that's a fun little side dive. I can see that we're there. Okay, and we have ID zero. We're almost done, aren't we? Or are we done? No, let's do some of the responsive work. Oh, our H3 needs adjusted. Okay, so we had an H2 exception. Here's an H3 exception. So the section uh, here is gonna own these exceptions because they're part of that. I think it makes sense, at least for what I understand of this design system right now. And its font size needs to be smaller than the other one, uh, one five, well it's 1.1. This could just be one rem, it's already bold, right? Oh, and it has a lot of spacing after it for the gap that's coming in. So we have a gap annoyance and we can probably get our way out of here. Let's get rid of here, yeah, let's do this. Okay, we're gonna get out of that gap annoyance by nesting in a div. Right, paste special so it matches my whatever. Okay, now we see those collapsed together so we can bring in their own type of spacing issues that they need to solve. Uh, that keeps the spacing consistent amongst the other spaces which it looks like we see here. Okay, and this is still too tall or too large, that font size uh, on our H2. How is one rem so large? Because I'm not changing it. Oh, I'm not changing it anymore because our selector uh, stopped matching with our nested direct descendant. So we'll take out the nested, like the direct part, and now we'll be able to reach into those and, and set those styles. Okay, well now we have one last issue, issue which is when a 
H3 is followed by a small. The small is uh, a little tight against the, the content up there. And I want to do this with a small. So here, this is definitely something I do in a small in a design system, small or paragraph, this is going to be max inline size is 45 characters, something like that. Like, I don't think that that should wrap so wide. Um, and look at that, that didn't actually even affect us here. Hey. Max width. Oh, it's because it's display inline block. I think it's a. By default, it's inline. Yeah, so here's our 45 characters. Probably have it somewhere around there. So here for a small, funny. This is why we do this from scratch. So a small, we need to set its display to inline block. That's kind of how I think about them anyway. So maybe that would be uh, something for your design size. And then uh, I didn't like 45 there. I thought 45 was a little, um, a little too much or too short. So let's do 55 and then a paragraph, which is already display block. And really, this should do display inline or display block. I don't treat smalls as inline. Ah, I sometimes do though. Here, let's just stick it there. Okay. And whatever. We don't have any paragraphs right now, so that's not going to matter. Okay. We need this small though in this one context here. All smalls will margin top the same spacing that's kind of actually not the same. I don't think we should do the same. Yeah, it should be like half a rem. There's a tight relationship here, but it's not like it was there. Okay, let's see. So I felt like we had a long sentence here that was like awkward. And it's almost more awkward there. Um, so maybe in general, those are fine. Here, let's take these. These are no longer generic styles for a small, I don't think. Let's pop those in here. It's max inline size. I think I might drop it again and go smaller because it's a little note, right? Like why would a little note consume so much space? But hmm, it's starting to feel like this content is just injected into there, isn't it? And it's And it should be like in a tool tip. I don't know. I kind of like my layout take here better. I do need a more of a separation here though. I like this about this one. So see how this is a little tight? Oops. This is a little tight right here um, as compared to this one. Maybe we just need more gap. Let's try a bigger gap on our, this is our main section container, right? Ah, that is nice. And you know what? In the spirit of more space being better, let's check that out. Okay. A good tip from Steve Sugar is if you're um, having mixed feelings about spacing, overdo the spacing and work backwards. Like here, let's go to six. Like, I'm honestly not annoyed by six. Actually, six is getting annoying. Okay, so let's drop it to four. Four is nice. That's small. I want you to be 40 characters wide. Yes. Okay. Okay. I think we're done. I'm going to do one knit. And my knit is I'm going to make another text color. So text two, so this is gonna be, we'll do like text three. Notice these are starting to not scale though. Okay, so we're gonna do, like I want a really similar similar dark color to this one. Here is the label. I want it to just be a little lighter, a little lighter. Like I want the numbers to pop and the label to just be pushed back a hair. So to do that, I'm gonna to have to take this color and just have a slight reduction um, so let's see, this color is almost white, this color is almost black. So in order to do the reduction towards a lighter, I need this. This is kind of like how we we're going to, this is the sequence, which means I'm going to have to go update other text twos to text three, and then grab the color on my label. Um, 
is going to be text three. Right? Yes. No, we have text two. So text three is on each section. Text two, let's make this more exaggerated. I don't, oh, I need text two here. There we go. Okay, so text two is our sort of in-between color. That's too much. Let's go to 30. So just a 10% lightness change is totally all I want there. Yep. And we're gonna do one more last fun thing here. Let's set a base hue of um, 200. And then we're gonna use that hue throughout all of these. And with that, we can also bring in a little bit of saturation across some of these and just bring in a tiny amount of blue to our color palette. Let's go 30. Ah, did you see it? Did you see the shift? The whole, the whole design just got cooler. Okay, I'm gonna undo it actually. And I mean cool, uh, like is in the color cool. Do you see how it's warm right now? And as I add in 20% of blue, it becomes just so slightly cool. And I'm gonna leave ours just so slightly cool. And in fact, our text three, which one is our, we can bump up the saturation on this text too. So it's just a little bit more blue as well. Ooh, too much, 30. Cool, so it's got like this slate gray feel. Okay, so I, um, I'm i gonna call this video done and uh, just recap kind of what we did as um, we completed this layout. And first we'll start with our HTML. So here we can collapse some of these down so we can break them down later. We created a section to hold our uh, content here. We have an H2 that's, uh, oh, that H2 looks like it had a regression. No, I think I just liked it a little larger. Anyway, okay, so we have an H2. This is our first header entry for this section. So it's gonna be our high, our like lowest number, our highest priority header. And we'll work our way into one that's more nested here in the H3 as we get down. So we'd probably have an H2 here with a bunch of H3s. And if there were nested headers inside of there, we'd do that. Okay, uh, then we have our div stats. So this was our stats layout and our stats layout uh, just expected single divs to be as children. And the way that it works, let's grab our stats section layout here. Oh, here, let's look at our set. Oh yeah, our section layout. We can break this one down too before we get into stats. This one is just providing spacing between our different content sections. I do see this is kind of an interesting issue here with our gap. Our gap can't be super dynamic to these spacings. I think we should change that actually. I think this header is related to this group. We should include it that way. And I think we, we kind of did that here. We should have moved stats as well into the div. Because we do, we have these sections in here that need to be grouped together. So this is like a section. We have stats that are going to be inside of a div. Right. So even though this other one doesn't have a special header, here, paste special. There we go. Which will probably break our layout just a little bit. Let's get this back in there and let's fix what we broke. Okay, so what we gained is that we can now control the spacing between our our um, stats and the items inside of there. So we have stats, right, stats here. So if it's a child next to a small, hmm, we could say stats need some margin because we don't need gap anymore. We're, or, hmm, we have some spacing to deal with now that we've corrected that. I like that we went here and saw this. So look, this is the, the layout that I wanted with grid. I think this is appropriate for the high level layout. We've got equal spacing between the nested stats sections inside of our section, right? Okay, so just to go check our HTML again, we have an H2, the div. And this, this section is a stat group. We could call this a stat group here. Stat group, stat group, say it like a dork, stat groot. 
That'd be fun. Okay, uh, all right, well now we have this. We could bring in the gap property here between these and the stats, but all right, we'll figure this out. We have a stat group now, and the stat group's whole point was just to articulate our semantic intention. Great. Now, and we have spacing between our stat groups, we need the internal of a stat group to space the stats and the descriptions. This is almost like a little header. Do we have a header element in here yet? I don't think so, right? So I think that makes sense as a header there, and this one just doesn't have a header. It's a header, a headless, a headerless layout, um, and we just need our spacing between here now. So let's dive into there. Here's our stat group. Our stat group has no display type. We might just be able to get away with like display grid and gap of two characters or something like that. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Uh, or we'll do flex. No, we'll do grid because grid naturally is flowing in the block direction, which is what we want. Okay, so I'm going to take this and drop that on our stat group. So we've got a new class we got to fill out, and it's just a simple layout. I love layouts that barely do anything. This is really common. It's just, see, look, we made a couple of those today. Look, display grid with a gap, display grid with a gap. we got flex with a gap whenever we're going the uh, inline direction. So I kind of just picked those and rock their defaults. Um, are we done now that we added that? Here, refresh, save. Let's check. Let's do a little code review or a little layout review. Um, all right, this layout, I hear that. It's gross, that color. Oh, whatever. Ah, it's blinding me. I don't like it. Must change to something radder. Okay. Great. This is beautiful. This is what I would expect in like a well-grouped design file, right? Look at all, all the alignments here. All the alignment is great. Oh, man, we haven't done a responsive pass. We'll have to check that. Okay. Now let's check. Our stat group. Our stat group in this case isn't doing much. Whoa! Ah. Whoa! I found a weird bug right there. Dude, to hover. Hover bugs are hard. Okay. Here's our stat group. Ah, see, that looks nice, right? Really clean, kind of layout in here. Just a gap. Very controlled. Oh, I love how the tools overlay on that. It looks really nice. Okay, let's look at a stat. So we'll take off that. Take off that one. And we'll look at our stats. Or maybe look at these stats. Yeah, no gap which might be an issue. And in fact, let's test our responsiveness because right now this is really pretty that these go edge to edge, but I think it's unrealistic. And I think it's more realistic that we're going to need a gap of like one character at least inside of there. Great. And now that we have that gap, um, let's test some of our responsiveness. I'm just going to add that in because I know it's going to be needed. Okay, let's check it out. Let's see how this goes take off these grids even though they look awesome right we dropped to a new line because oh and look we can see oh gap was important here as well oh we can even do a special syntax to do our gap um have the columns and rows be different so it's wrong gap I go two characters. Oh, grid gap is, yeah, that's never going to work. Right. Okay, so it's rows and then columns. Yes. Right. Okay, that looks very nice. We had a two. Yeah, do we even want more? Yes, I think we do. I think three and one looks really nice. Cool. So what we're doing is we're stating, oh, in our stats, that we want a row gap of three characters and a column gap of one character. And that is gonna make sure that as we flow onto new rows, like this will be a nice layout, right? Ooh, let's look at our grid for this too. Look at that. Okay, we have more spacing between these items than we do here which is okay. We see this is kind of tight, All right? Hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, hmm. Is this too much? No, that is, that is not better. That, 
arguably is harmonious. See our harmony that we're hitting here, having consistent spacing. Let's do two. Okay, so we're gonna do two and one. Reason being is uh, I liked that consistency. Let's use less, less variance uh, can be better here. This we could control maybe with another little flare in here. Like let's say max uh, or 50%. I'm taking some wild swings here because essentially what I want it to do is be a little bit more intelligent about its flex points and sort of um, clamping them into something better. Uh, hmm. Like I'd rather not have a loose, uh, you know, an um, orphan here. I'd rather have these be more flexible, like 30%. Did I even save when I did that last time? I could probably be doing this in DevTools and get a better result. Oh, look, okay, so at least I've cramped it beyond where it wants to be there. There's a, f here, 50%, okay, so 50%. And then let's go, oh, less, 10 characters. Right, okay, so we'll allow it to collapse. So it's gonna continue to grow, okay. Flex grow, it's, uh, well, it's not flexing, but it's being liquid in. Here we're gonna get adaptive because we're gonna reach our minimum of 10 characters or 50%, let's see. Oh, that is not good. I wanna go back to 20 characters or maybe 15, I don't know. Sure, sure, okay. Which is still gonna let us hit this scenario. I don't think that this isn't, a way this is a way to fix it right here oh, I'm just I'm just flailing hey I think these are just gonna be contextual to the one scenario though right oh I see it's a little backwards from what I want it to be it's kind of close though like look that's fine it's when I hit this other scenario, maybe this just needs to be, oh. Because essentially that's that's delightful. The size that it gets to here is delightful, but at about here, let's try clamping this. Let's clamp at a minimum of, let's see, what was it, it was like 10, 10 characters, an optimal amount of 50% with a maximum of one FR? I don't know, that seems really weird. Yeah, that's not working. Um, yeah, I don't know, can I clamp it? I, mean, I guess, it. How, why would it care if I was clamping there or somewhere else? Hmm. So now we're trying to clamp Oh, because that'll set a, a max. Oh, man. It's like I needed to swoop open sooner here. Like, let's just, let's, can we tweak our way into this? Hmm. I don't think so. Everything seems to be, yeah, I'm not going to be able to tell. Without a media query, I can't tell Grid to stick to... I'm telling them to wrap an auto-fit. I can't tell it to wrap an auto-fit equally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our original, which was much easier to understand. Um, layout here, which is 15. 15 is good. Sure. I mean, that's just a min, right? Yeah, we're going to let these go out to as long as they want. It's like at this point, we're saying, yes, um, time to go to a new line. I could, you know, like look at this new line and be like, what, what's my page width? And this 728, I could say like at, let's just do it. At media, uh, max width is 720 pixels. We want to, um, well, really, what are we looking to do? We just want to adjust a variable here. So we'll have like var um, min and we'll have like, a min here of 15 characters and then what we're going to update is min we'll just update min 
to uh, something larger so that we know we get a new line. There was even a little spot in there where it's like, I don't know. And I think we're, it's a little early, 480. So we're making this exception just for, oh, I see. We wanted to fix our orphan, not necessarily anything else. And that orphan is just a little tough to nip. So I think what we can do is, um, let's just go stricter with our template here. Say 1FR, here we'll repeat for 1FR. And then in here, here, we'll get rid of our min. We'll repeat 2. Wait, that's not even actually what I want. I think what I want is like minimum. So let's do this mobile first. Min width 480, we want two columns and at media min width 720. I mean, we'll figure these values out better here in a second. So we're just basically saying at various widths, we're going to increase our columns. So we're going to manually manage how many columns grid is creating as we go up in screen size. So on mobile, uh, here we are, uh, pretty much no columns or grid templates are being specified. Here we hit our media query, we re repeat two, and we repeat four as soon as, okay, I thought that was pretty pretty healthy. We could probably even do math in here about character counts. Like we could say, um, ah, who cares? I liked it sort of as it as it operated there. I do wanna have fun and do this. Let's do um, columns, uh, one. And in here, Oh, here, we'll set this one time. So we've got our gap. And then we have our columns. Because then in here, we can just do columns two. And over here, columns four. Same result. Squish down, we see our two. Squish down, we see our one. I am happy with that I think it works do 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 in the last little sweep sweep I like the even spacing around the edges I like our numbers and our colors I like our tablet display I honestly think our labels are a little big maybe this is too close no I like that relationship this is this was interesting how did we solve that again we solved it with oh some margin. Let's put a header. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of margin. As a little refactor, as we're kind of cleaning up the end here and here, we don't even need this cruft. That's that's cruft. Um, we added a margin, and I'm gonna get rid of the margin in favor of adding a section. Let's see, is it section? No. Uh, we added a header. Our stat group got a header, right? Our stat group has an optional header, and if our stat group does have a header guess what yeah yeah and we'll do that cool and as a last and final thing here let's do space um, spacing one which I think we have a 0.5 rem somewhere this is usually what I end up doing here something like this spacing two three Oh, here, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's only count what we have, just like we did with our text here. We have a gap of four characters. I'm, a, I'm hoping that we really only have a few different numbers, and maybe we need to resolve our characters and our rems here. Looks like I'm a little bit more consistently using character. Well, character is different. I like using character in a, in a scenario where I want it to be contextual to the font size of its of its current usage. So character is something I use more in like a an area like gap here where it should play nice with the things around it. But rem is something where I want it like I'm like, no, the user could be bumping up their font size and I want us to be respectful of that. Um, oh, look, that looks nice. Let's go back to zero. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, okay, so as we, we we were doing a recap, right? And then I just got distracted. I think we 
the distraction was really good though. Okay, uh, Len, let's just kind of maybe do a recap number two. We have our stats, we created a bunch of groups. We organized our DOM so that we could get a nice a harmonious inspection here. This is almost like the design file going through it and then perfecting it so that it's it can reach its maximum flexibility. Like I think what we've set up here, see how this is? This is really nice. Um, oh, and we could even crunch our padding down in another media query. Um, actually, we, we would pad it up. Let's check it out. Let's do padding one for when we're on like a mobile uh, scenario and uh, at media um, min width of 480. This is like we're starting to get into bigger devices. Uh, we'll say a padding of 2 rem. And I'm going to get rid of our little spacing variables because I don't feel like making a spacing system right now. And that is that for now. How long did our video take? Probably way too long, but I think we really ironed out some nice features in there. Have a nice responsive layout, and there's a lot of goodies in there for um, managing your styles. I hope, I hope. So we got away with kind of creating a bunch of classes, a lot of grids, and some colorful HSL um, play. So now you could even come in here and change this hue to like 100, and you'll get like a greener effect. In fact, you just come into the, the page and do this change our hue and watch it just sort of rainbow um, but stay monochromatic and really nice so that's kind of cool that we could do that and that concludes this video i hope these lessons are helpful and are helping you realize that layout is well it's kind of an art and a lot of these things need really fine-tuned hand tweezed and they're best that way um, because then they can flex as the rest of the layout changes or adapts or gets perfected so anyway take care and thanks for watching this video i'll see you later